Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor, with another short screencast on how to publish your finished web pages to the JCCC student web server. Here we are at my homepage, students.jccc.edu slash Lisa L. Fry, where I have a listing for all of my YouTubes. And if you're watching this one, you're probably in my Web 110 class, and you're done with your first Hello World project, and you want to publish it to the JCCC web server. So by this time, you've looked at the Canvas YouTube, you've perhaps looked at some of these objective YouTubes, the material we're going to learn, and you're into creating your first web page. You've gone through these YouTubes as well. So what we're talking about right here is publishing your files to the JCCC student web server using FileZilla. Once you've finished your web page in a code editor such as Notepad++, you're going to want to take that file and place it on the JCCC web server. It's a web page address, also known as a URL, that you will then submit for your homework. So this document here, this PDF document, tells you how to connect to the JCCC web server. So you're going to want to download that link and set up your computer. And basically what happens is you use a product called FileZilla. FileZilla is simply a free software product that allows you to move files from your local machine on the left to a remote machine on the right. So the first time you want to talk to a remote machine on the right, you're going to have to do a file site manager and fill out the information about how that machine wants to be contacted. Now in my FileZilla, I talk to six different machines. You'll The first time you do this, you won't have any sites over here on the left. So you'll have to create a new site, and you can call it the JCCC Student File Server or just JCCC, whatever you want to call it, and then you'll fill out this information. And that's what's in the PDF, the information that goes here. And that is these pieces of information right here. The protocol you'll leave as FTP, the host, students, plural, .jccc.edu. The encryption is require explicit FTP over TLS. Login type, if you're on your own machine, make it normal. That way it will not prompt you for your username and password as much. And then your username will just be the last part. And then my username is a little bit more complicated because I'm an employee. Yours will just be whatever your username is at JCCC and, of course, your own password. If you're at JCCC in our labs, this login type is going to say interactive, and it's going to interactively ask you for your username and your password every time you touch the server because we don't want to save your credentials on our lab machines. But if you're on your own machine where no one else is going to be using it, go with normal, and that will just cut down on the number of times that it will prompt you. So once you have those settings into your site manager, and that's what the PDF explains, go ahead and click OK. You're ready now to simply connect with that server. And I've just called it JCCC, so I'm going to connect. And what you're looking for up here is this message, successful. You have successfully knocked on the door of the remote site, the remote computer, the JCCC student file server, and you're ready to transfer files there. You can use that student web server in different ways. You can use it merely as cloud storage, where you just use it as a backup device so that you have secured the work that you have on your computer in a second location, or you can use it to create URLs. And that's what this public underscore HTML folder is all about. The first thing you're going to want to do is find your files here on the left. And I've put the files I want to publish conveniently up on my desktop in my Web 110 folder. And let's pretend that the Chapter 1 folder, I can double click it and see what's in there. Let's pretend that that Chapter 1 folder contains all the files that I want to publish to the remote site. Anytime you double click a folder, you're going to see its contents here in the bottom. If you want to go up a level, you can either double click up here or this little dot dot icon will also back you up a level. So the first thing is simply to find what you want to publish on the left, either in the top or in the bottom pane. Second of all, you simply drag that folder and drop it on the public underscore HTML folder. It's very important that you be in that folder because that's the only folder that creates a URL for you. Now, if I want to use the JCCC student web server as mere cloud storage, I can drag a folder that I want to back up anywhere over here on the right. 
and it will transfer that folder and all the files to the JCCC student server. If I want to create a URL, however, I need to drop it inside the public underscore HTML folder. That's the special folder that the web server technicians have set up that will automatically create a URL for you, but only for the folders and files that are inside that public underscore HTML folder. Let's see what I've got in my public underscore HTML folder already. I've got several folders. The first time you look in your public underscore HTML folder, you won't have anything. But throughout the class, you'll publish new homework each and every week. That's why it's really important to keep it organized on your local machine so that you can drag an entire folder to the public underscore HTML folder and all the files within it will get published automatically. In the beginning, we only work with one file, but as the class progresses, we'll add CSS files for styling, we'll add image files so that we have images on our web page, and we'll have multiple HTML files that link together. So publishing a whole folder will be much more productive than publishing the individual files inside that folder. Any homework for Web 110 must go inside this public underscore HTML folder so that a URL is created. And let's just pick this night2 folder and look inside it. I've got a night2.html file. So once you've published your work successfully over to the right, you're done with FileZilla. It's simply a transfer tool. To take files and folders from the left, your local machine, to the right, the remote machine. Once you've confirmed that the files have transferred successfully, you can close FileZilla and then come up to a browser and find those files. And so this part, students, plural.jccc.edu slash your name, that is your public underscore HTML folders URL. And then anything you put inside that folder gets tagged on to the end. So if I were to find that night2 HTML file, it was in a night2 folder and then night2.html, enter, and I can confirm then that the web page I created and uploaded did indeed go to the JCCC student server, and I can find it through the URL. Again, the key to this is to remember that that students.jccc.edu slash your name, that part represents the public underscore HTML folder, and then any folders and files that you put inside that public underscore HTML folder get tagged on to the end. And isn't this exciting? Because now we can see those web pages from any computer connected to the internet. And that's what you'll be submitting every week to me as homework, the URL that points to your homework files. Thank you.